This is a lecture on what happens to our bodies in terms of the digestive system um, as we age from October 19th, 2020. And you can see here some age-related changes to the gastrointestinal tract from the nose and the mouth through the esophagus, the stomach, um, and down into the intestines. And we're going to focus on a couple of these changes throughout this lecture. Um, and in order to really understand what's changing, we need to know and review a little bit of the basic functions of the digestive system, talk about a couple of different important enzymes, um, and then <laughs> we're going to discuss the age-related changes, um, or kind of lack of age-related changes in some cases, of the salivary glands, the esophagus, the stomach, and the small intestine. Right? And so the digestive sy system's main function <clears throat> is to, one, extract and absorb the nutrients from the food that we eat, and two, to eliminate any unabsorbable waste products. Right? And so normally food will enter in through your mouth <clears throat> and will start to be digested both mechanically by your teeth as well as chemically by enzymes secreted in your saliva. And then food will move down into the esophagus, which is basically just a muscular tube to connect the mouth to the stomach. And stomach is really where a lot of digestion is going to take place. And food is going to be exposed to very low pH, um, very acidic conditions, as well as enzymes like pepsin that can break down peptide bonds, <coughs> as well as some kind of mechanical churning within the stomach right, to really break down or digest that food. But none of the nutrients are really absorbed until food enters into the intestine. And the small intestine is where most of that absorption of nutrients and extraction of nutrients happens. And then food, or um, digested food, and will enter into the large intestine and ultimately be excreted, right? And humans have a couple additional organs, including the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas, which <clears throat> help us digest and absorb nutrients from a variety of different foods. And it kind of gives us um, a way to increase the diversity of our diets compared to other species. And to be completely fair, um, digestive system function, the uh, rate at which we digest food and absorb it, declines very little with age. Um, common digestive ailments such as gastritis, constipation, and other issues like that increase in frequency. But the true function of the digestive system um, only declines kind of minimally. And the decline in the digestive system is thought to be a result of both um, intrinsic factors or physical changes, as well as kind of just years and years of bad eating habits, right? And so um, these extrinsic factors are kind of just years and years of eating like crap can also contribute to a decline in digestive system function. And so when we talk about some age-dependent changes, we're going to start where the food starts, right? We're going to talk about the mouth first. And so one major um, issue that can impact digestion in relation to age is the loss of teeth. And so um, tooth loss is actually something that has been sort of uh, slowing down in decline due to the increase in dental hygiene. And so in individuals 65 or older, between 1999 and 2004, 20% of them, 27%, seem to have um, a large kind of tooth loss. And that decreased to only 17% in 2011 to 2016. Um, and that's likely due to just kind of long-term dental hygiene efforts. But teeth, tooth loss is still an issue. And what can actually happen with tooth loss is also a sort of denervation of the jawbone beneath. So usually your teeth are connected via nerves into the jawbone. And there's sort of this, if you lose it, if you don't use it, you lose it situation where if you don't have this nerve cell coming from your tooth innervating the jawbone, you lose jawbone volume. And you can see this jawbone receding here after tooth loss, um, and then even more once when the innervation <coughs> is completely gone. 
and that can lead to changes in facial structure, which you can see down here. And this is one issue that actually comes up when people get dentures as well, because they have to remove all of your teeth, and that loss of innervation can lead to jawbone kind of degeneration um, and structure changes. Right? And then you can imagine that loss of teeth would impact digestion just because teeth are really there to begin that mechanical breaking down of food. And the less that that can happen in the mouth, the harder it's gonna be for the food to be digested later on. Right. In addition, um, there's sal saliva in your mouth that starts the process of chemical digestion. You have two major enzymes. Um, lysozyme is an enzyme in your saliva that basically kills um, different types of bacteria by helping to degrade their cell wall and prevent you from ingesting those pathogens into your digestive tract. And alpha amylase is an enzyme that initiates starch digestion by breaking uh, starch down into maltose. And so alpha amylase is important for the digestion of carbohydrates, right? And starting that process of breaking down complex carbohydrates like starch in your mouth. And what's interesting is that saliva, saliva volume and salivary enzyme concentration both remain pretty stable with age. There's a slight decline in the amount of volume of saliva, a slight decline in these enzymes concentration, but they remain pretty stable. Um, one thing that does affect saliva volume are sort of age-related disorders, um, different cancers as well as uh, neurodegenerative diseases and strokes can lead to decrease in saliva volume or dry mouth, and that can severely affect digestion as a result. Okay, and so then if we move down from the mouth into the esophagus, there's really not a lot of kind of age-related decline in esophageal function. So we're not really gonna focus on that. We're gonna move past the tube of the esophagus into the stomach. And the stomach has several different functions as well. Um, it's a store, it has a storage function um, so that we can save, uh, eat a large meal, save that food, and then extract nutrients later. And its job is mainly in digestion, right? So it liquefies food by secreting different um, enzymes, which you can see some of here in this table, uh, as well as hydrochloric acid. Um, and that will really serve to sort of liquefy that food that was uh, mechanically digested a little bit in the mouth um, and now really, really chemically digest that food. And the stomach also has sort of an interesting function in secreting exocrine hormones. And so the stomach can secrete hormones that basically prime the rest of the digestive system to know that food is coming and that they'll have to begin absorption of that food soon. Right, and so the stomach secretes enzymes that prime both uh, the small and large intestine for that kind of like upcoming food um, and upcoming function, which is important. And the way that digestion really happens within the stomach is <coughs> by um, the mucosa or the lining of the stomach wall and the cells within it secreting all of these different substances. And the mucosa of the stomach is organized into structures called gastric pits, which you can see an example of up here. And those gastric pits contain different types of cells, chief cells, parietal cells, some endocrine cells, um, and food can actually come down into these gastric pits. And then these cells, particularly the parietal cells and chief cells, which to, um, secrete hydrochloric acid, um, pepsin, and other digestive enzymes can then digest that food within the pits. And you can imagine that by having this type of structure rather than just a flat structure, it gives more surface area for these cells. So more of those enzymes and, and digestive um, juices can be secreted and more digestion can happen, right? Because it increases the surface area. And so within the stomach, <coughs> There is some loss of chief cell and parietal cell function that um, 
comes with a particularly or a particular age-related disorder called atrophic gastritis. And gastritis or itis is an inflammation and gastro is stomach, right? So this is an inflammation of the stomach mucosa or that lining of the stomach that's very, very highly correlated with age. And if you look at an image of a person with a normal quote unquote stomach here on the left, you can see that there's these folds that actually make up that mucosa. And in the patient with atrophic gastritis on the right, those folds are no longer there because the insides of the folds have become inflamed or swollen to the point where the folds can't be seen anymore. In addition to those kind of inflammation, as I said, chief cells and parietal cells are lost from the gastric pits, which decreases the overall levels of hydrochloric acid and other digestive enzymes in the stomach. And rather than replacing those cells with new chief and parietal cells, they become replaced with a fibrous tissue. And you can imagine that by decreasing the levels of these different enzymes as well as hydrochloric acid, digestion is really, really dramatically affected because the stomach is the major digestive organ. And so atrophic, atrophic gastritis can cause severe digestive problems as well as nutrient deficiencies. Because if you can't break down the food, you can never extract the nutrients, right? And so um, atrophic gastritis is usually one associated with age um, and some of the nutrient deficiencies seen in older individuals. <laughs> and it's caused mostly by a persistent infection with a particular bacteria called uh, Heliobacter pylori or H. pylori. And H. pylori infection seems to be very, very common in older individuals. Um, and it's not super clear why, but there is some hypothesis that the reason H. pylori can cause persistent infections in older individuals is because of changes within the acid production in the stomach, right? And so um, in childhood, when you have sort of a higher level of acid production, you're able to um, fight off an acute H. pylori infection with the normal kind of gastric mucosa that you have. There is um, a connection between sort of like that acid being able to kill this particular bacteria within your stomach. However, as you age, <coughs> an acute H. pylori infection may no longer be susceptible to the acid in your stomach because acid production has decreased. You've lost um, the parietal cells and chief cells that might be able to degrade this bacteria originally as you age um, and the acidity goes down. And H. pylori then can turn from an acute or short-term infection into sort of a chronic infection. And that chronic infection can lead to atrophic gastritis, right, as one possible issue. Um, and then that ultimately could lead to ulcers um, as well as other types of, as well as types of cancer include gastric cancer, it's lymphoma here. Um, and so this H. pylori infection that's common in older individuals is actually really detrimental, not just to digestion, but it can cause further um, age-related disorders. <laughs> and so there are ongoing efforts into understanding how to decrease this H. pylori infection in, age, in aged individuals. <laughs>